Welcome back to the second episode of Sound More Like John Frusciante. In this episode, we'll try to recreate John's basic amp sound based on what we talked about in the last video. So I'll be using Orange Tortex, a Fender Strat with stock single coil pickups, regular light gauge strings but with an 11 instead of a 10 on the high E, and for the amps I'll be modeling everything in my Axe FX2 and be trying to get as close as I can to the amps, settings, cabs, and microphones that John used. First I'll show you what the amps sound like individually, then together, and then I'll run them through the Boss CE1 so you can see how the preamp affects the sound. At the end of the video I'll also demonstrate why it's important to be running some sort of buffer before the CE1. Let's get into it. Okay, so here we are in the Axe Edit software, and this is a basic preset I've created for John's sound. For the first amp, we're using the Brit Silver model, which is based on the Marshall Silver Jubilee. I left the majority of the settings unchanged, but I adjusted the EQ to match this picture of John's amp during the Stadium Arcadium era. And I rolled back the input drive so that the amp is mostly clean with just a tiny bit of grit. Lastly, I turned down the overall level of this block to an appropriate level for my setup and I panned the amp fully to the left. For the cab, I'm using a model of a Marshall 1960B with Celestian G12T75 speakers, the same ones that John used, and I'm miking it with an SM57. I didn't change any settings here except for the level of the block and again panning it all the way to the left. Here's how it sounds. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's no model of the Marshall Major in the Axe Effects, but since it is a plexi style amp and John jumped the inputs, I figured the closest thing to it was this 100 watt jump plexi model. Again, I kept most of the factory settings, but adjusted the EQ to match John's Major from this pick during the stadium tour. Then I adjusted the drive of the two channels to a point that sounded nice and balanced, not too trebly, and about as loud as I could go without reaching any distortion. I adjusted the overall level of this block to match the level of the other amp, and I panned this one fully to the right. Again, I used the stock 1960B cab, mic'd with an SM57, only adjusting the level and panning it to the right. Here's how this one sounds. Now let's hear what these amps sound like together. I think using two different amps, split by the CE1, is where the real magic of John's tone lies. First I'll play a short clip of each amp individually to refresh your ears, then you'll hear them together, and then with the CE1 added. If you don't have a buffer before your CE1 in the signal chain, it's actually going to sound quite a bit different than what you just heard. Here I've got the CE1 in the third loop of this true bypass loop switcher. Right now my signal is passing straight through this switcher and not going through any of these pedals. I'm going to play those chords again and then engage the third loop to pass the signal through the CE1 to show you what it sounds like without a buffer. Without a buffer, the CE1 doesn't sound very good. It didn't really boost the signal at all, and really just made my guitar sound a lot darker and duller. In my first video that I ever posted on this channel, I had suggested that you needed a WH10 in combination with the CE1 to fix this, but I really think that most any buffer placed before the CE1 in the signal chain will do the trick. To show you what I mean, let's test it with three different buffers. First I'll pass the signal through the DS2, and you'll hear how this boss buffer changes the tone. Then I'll pass it through the WH10, and finally, I'll activate the internal buffer of this loop switcher, and we'll see how that sounds too. I 
didn't notice much of a difference there between the boss buffer or the one in my loop switcher, but the level seemed to be noticeably lower when it passed through the WH10. That being said, it still brought the brightness back to the signal. And that's the main takeaway here. If you're going to use a CE1 or some sort of CE1 preamp clone, don't forget to put that buffer in front. In the next episode, we'll talk about how to incorporate the Dynacomp, the Microamp, and the WH10 into this setup and try and recreate some more of John's clean tones. Thanks for watching.